God's holy word. Lord, we pray that we may receive your word with joy, with willing hearts, and true understanding of your will for our lives. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from Proverbs 1, verse, 1, verse 31 to 33. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, and be saved with their own devices. The waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys men. But those who listen to me will be secure and live at ease without dread of disaster. The New Testament reading today is from James chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. You must remember this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for human anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sort of this and rank growth of with and rank growth of wickedness. And welcome with me is the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Where the Bible tells us 
My beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Yeah, he start, see, he starts that verse off with the idea of hearing or listening. Because if we're swift to hear others and we're less likely to speak, then we're more likely to hear what's going on. There is a difference, isn't there, between hearing and listening? Let's talk, let's talk about being out in the woods. I used to hear all the, all the hunters I run around with talk about how, oh my goodness, how quiet it is out in the woods. And how serene it is. And I'm going, where are these people sitting? Because it is not quiet in the woods. It is constant movement. Constant even just leaves falling off of trees sometimes can sound like a house falling. You know? You hear something and you look at it and, you, and, and you're watching leaves travel like this as they fall off trees and hit other leaves and make sounds. Listening is so important. So important to what goes on in our lives. Conversations are so important. I heard a preacher one time talking about how, how he thought it was cool. He, he remembered a conversation he had when he was about nine years old because he happened to run into the governor of Alabama. Of course, he was from Alabama. And so he, at nine years old, he had run into the governor and he got to meet the governor. So he and the governor of Alabama had a conversation. And how cool that was that he got to sit and speak with the governor, just him and the governor one-on-one. -on -one. So I called him later and he told him, I said, you know, that, and I'm sure that was a really cool experience, but I got one that loved you on that. He said, what's that? And I said, well, when I was 10 years old, I played a gig at the Black Rock um, Trail Riders Arena. You know what I'm talking about right there by the rest stop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? Um, we played a gig there as a fundraiser for Bill Clinton. I was in a bluegrass band. And we played a, a fundraiser for Bill Clinton at that arena. I was 10 years old, so I got to meet Bill and we talked a little bit. That was kind of cool. But it wasn't near as cool as about eight years later, when I happened to run into Bill Clinton again in Little Rock. And I walked up to him and I said, Hey, Bill. And he said, Hey, Rowdy, how are you doing? And shook my hand. And he goes, You got me on that story. But you know, I've always heard that story about Bill. But he had, he, if you met you one time, he knew who you were. But this young man had made such a big deal out of talking to the governor and running into the governor because to him it was an important conversation. And now he remembered exactly what they had talked about, exactly what they had, they had discussed because it was so important to him. And it was important to him that the governor of Alabama had taken the time to listen to what he had to say. It's so important that we listen because God does speak to us continually in various forms and fashions. Now, I always kind of put a wall up here and put up a disclaimer before I go any further. Because I have two stories I'm going to relate to you, which are situations in my life where I believe there was some speaking going on. Now, I can't explain to you either one of these situations, and I don't know, and I couldn't prove anything if you asked me to. But isn't that the way things work with the Spirit anyways? If 
if we could explain it all the time, it, 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 there would be no faith. That as we know through Scripture, that without faith it's impossible to please Him. So if God could prove Himself to us beyond a shadow of a doubt, then there would be no faith. Because it would be based on the fact. In 1999, my wife and I were up at Eureka Springs at Opera in the Ozarks. My wife was a trained opera singer. And she was performing Cavalleria Rusticana. She was Santuzza in that opera. And something happened that required me. I was up there working on sets as an XR teacher. <laughs> and so I was working on sets, and something happened that weekend that I just... I had to come back to Northeast Arkansas to get something or pick something up. I can't remember exactly what it was. But I had to come back to Northeast Arkansas. And it was just going to be a run down here trip and a run back trip. And so I came through Jonesboro because I had to stop and get something in Jonesboro. Then I was going on the carrier. Well, I was running low on gas. And I had made a decision that even though I was going to go through the hilltop area, for those of you familiar with Jonesboro, even though I was going to go through the hilltop area, I decided I wasn't going to stop at that gas station at Hilltop. I was going to go ahead and wait, because I thought I had enough gas, to go on to Perigord before I bought gas. And literally, I, first of all, why I remember having that thought within my brain, I'm not really sure. But I do remember thinking specifically, I'm not going to stop at Hilltop. But for some reason, when I got to Hilltop, I pulled into Hilltop and pulled up to the gas pump. And I even remember asking myself, why am I here? Why was not planning on doing this? And I thought, you know what? You've already stopped. Just get out, fill up with gas, and, and, and don't worry about it. So I get out of the car, and I go to the pump, and I grab the gas thing, and I turn it on, and I get that process started, put my the, 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 the gun into my tank and start it. And I'm standing there beside the car just hanging out. And I hear a familiar voice. And so I step around the gas pump and I look around. And on the other side of that gas pump is standing my brother and my nephew. He says, you know, next week's Trevor's birthday. Yeah, yeah, okay, we've got to, we've got to get together for that. We've got to take care of that, blah, blah, blah. He gets in his car and he leaves. And I get in my car and I leave. Nothing extraordinary about that conversation. Except for the fact that five days later, my brother was murdered. To this day, I don't know why I stopped at the gas station. I don't know what it said, stop. But something did. And I did. And I'm thankful. Because I got to have one last conversation with my brother that I wouldn't have gotten to have had I not pulled into that gas station. Had I not stopped where I never planned to stop. Second story. Now you got to understand, this is after a fellow, you know, it's not an inexperienced fellow. This is somebody who's been a preacher for 20 some odd years at various churches throughout Northeast Arkansas, even in Missouri and some other places. I, you know, I, 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 I've been around the scriptures a little. <laughs> you know, been a Bible major at Curly Ridge College and gone through processes. And, 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 you know, so, you know, it's, I kind of felt like I knew what I knew and what I felt and what I believed. Well, I had a job that I was unhappy with. And for four years, I haven't stuck in that job. 
And I bet you I interviewed 50 some odd times at different jobs trying to get out of those jobs and couldn't get out. Well, eventually I got out of that job and got into another job and I ended up in a perfect situation. But that's not really what this story is about. I just wanted you to understand the background because this is after all that, but yet, you know, have you ever been mad and you just don't know how to get unmad? You know what I'm talking about? You just, you know, I'm, I'm upset, you know, I, I asked the Lord for a job for four years and He didn't give it to me and I prayed and I prayed and you know what I'm talking about, right? You just, God's not doing it on your schedule. But eventually, he got around to it. Thank you. Got me out of that situation. But I was still mad. My wife likes to attend churches, let's just say that are a little more charismatic. <laughs> she enjoys services where people are more charismatic. And those churches tend to believe in the spirit and the movements and this kind of thing that a lot of us more conservative folks don't even like to talk about in church. But we were sitting in one of those more charismatic churches one night shortly after that situation with that job. And I was still mad and upset. And the fellow that was preaching was preaching. He preached probably three quarters of his sermon. And then he did one of the things that preachers in that style of preaching usually do. They'll stop and they'll come out and start talking. You know what I'm talking about? And, and the Lord said this and the Lord said that. And, and he went over here and he talked to one of the elders of the church and he was telling him some things, you know, being real generic and generalized. And, and then he came over here and he talks to actually the son of the fellow that was even the reason we were at that church. And he said, you know, the Lord tells me that, that you had a good childhood, that your father was a good man, and, and, and you're a good person, and I just want you to know the Lord's got plans for you. Real generic, real generalized, you understand? Well, my wife and I were sitting about three quarters of the way back on the left side of the church. And I'm watching this, and in my true conservative fashion, I said, now I want everybody to understand this story because I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not a person who deals with that kind of stuff a lot. But I'm telling you the truth. I said in my true conservative fashion to myself, oh yeah, God, if this mess is true, let him come talk to me. Now listen to me. Be careful what you ask for. Because I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you the truth here. He was down here almost literally at the end of this, you talking to this fellow, and I said that in my brain, and he did this. <laughs> <laughs> and then he stopped. And he walked right back to where I was sitting, and he looked me dead in my eyes, and he said, and I quote, God said that mess you've been dealing with is over with. Get over it. <laughs> Folks, sometimes God don't give you a chance of to listen. I don't know how all that works. Don't ask me to explain it. Don't ask me to come up with a reason or this, that. I don't know, y'all. I'm not a Holy Spirit expert, and the truth is, I don't think anybody is or can be. But I know this. I made a statement that nobody in the world could have heard except one person, and that's him. And whether you believe it or not, I believe 100%. I've got my answer. I don't understand it, I don't get it, but I know this. God speaks. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that the hills and the rocks, the earth itself, screams of God's reality and existence. We know that God speaks 
That's not a question. He speaks to us continually, trying to clarify His plan and the course of action that He has for us. Let's go to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 1. Where it says, starting in verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he had, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than that. So we know throughout time God spoke in many Ways, which included at times verbally speaking to people. We go, oh, yeah, but brother, now listen now. You know, that, that, that's, but you got to understand, that was the Old Testament times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you want New Testament? I seem to remember a guy named Paul. Anybody know him? Who had a conversation with God on the road. Why? Now, I can stand here as a 51-year-old man who's been a part of serving God and worshiping God his whole life and say to you, I have never had God audibly speak to me. Have But I can also stand here and tell you, but I'm not about to tell God that he can't do it. Because God can do exactly what he wants to do when he wants to do it if he chooses. God does speak to us. As we just read, He speaks to us through Jesus. Go to John. We all know the Scripture. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. We all know it, right? In the beginning was the Words. Word. Right? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? But it changes there where he says, it goes from the Word dealing with this inanimate object to all of a sudden identifying something or getting a little bit more personal because he says, He, He was with God. Word 
and the Spirit. And in John 1, we find out who the Word was, right? All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. Who said, I am the truth and the life? No man comes into the Father except by me, right? Jesus Himself. And the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Now understand, I was raised up in a religion that was pretty conservative, so that, that answer was, and that's what this is. This is Jesus. And they're right, this is. This is one form of Jesus. The written word that we have, and we know, and we all understand, that we learn from this word. And God speaks to us through this word. But again, I'm not going to limit Jesus and say that that's the only form he comes in. Right? So we know that God does speak to us and we know that he has plans and a course for us and that he shares that with us and we know that God speaks through Jesus. But my answer to you is if we want to hear God, then we have to listen. We have to be willing to listen. I stand here and tell you that I believe within myself that day in June of 1999, just a few days before my brother's death, that within myself, Somewhere I had the ability to say, I'm not going to stop at that gas station and could have kept driving. And I would have never had that encounter with my brother. But for some reason, I listened and I stopped. And I'm thankful for that one moment in time. A lot of people who were sitting on that pew back there could have said, that guy didn't know what he was talking about. I don't know why he get back there. Even after saying what I said. There's always the opportunity to deny and to refuse to hear. But I choose to listen and accept the opportunities that I've seen. If we want to hear God, we have to listen to Christ. We have to listen to His words. We know that 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 tells us what? All Scripture is given by the what? Inspiration of God. Literally, it was God and breathed. I don't know if we have any medical personnel in this building right now. But I will say this. I have been told. We understand how the body works, right? We understand that the diaphragm goes down, comes up, and in so doing, pushes air into and out of the lungs, which draws air in and pushes it out. And therefore we breathe, and that, that air, that oxygen goes into our bloodstream, through the lungs, and it gives us life, right? We understand the process of how it does it. Have you ever heard a medical personnel explain to you, though, how it started? Because at one time that diaphragm wasn't moving. It started somehow. My father was the first heart transplant in Oklahoma that actually lived through the surgery. Almost every transplant that they do, when they take that cold heart out of that ice chest that it's been medic back in, and they put it into the body and they get all this, the, the sewing done and everything's back together. Typically, the first thing they have to do is they have to massage that heart and warm it to get it moving. 
The doctor who did my dad's surgery, he said, I've never had it happen before, and I've never had it happen since. But I can tell you this. He said, literally, when I put that last stitch in your dad's heart, by the way, my dad had been dead for 19 hours in my life school, while they flew the heart in from Florida. He said, I put that last stitch in, and when I tightened it down, that heart started on its own. You see, we see that in, in, in Scripture, in Genesis, where it says in one simple statement that God breathed life into Adam. We can't we can explain how all that stuff works, but we can't explain what started it. We can't explain what sparks it. We can't explain what makes it happen initially. God speaks to us if we listen. And that, that word inspired all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Literally, that word in the Greek is God breathed. Wow. Wow. So I don't feel that even though I don't understand how that guy stood there and, and that happened, I, I don't know. But I make a choice to believe that something happened. And so I decided that day, in the words of the immortal eagles, <laughs> to get over it. Right? Get over it. to us through His Spirit. Look at John. Oh, lovely. The Lord's speaking to me right now. Scales fell from his eyes. 
And he stepped to that window and he looked out that window. And as he did, he saw God's army that surrounded that army. And he saw the angels and that whole spiritual army surrounding the entire city protecting it. And all of a sudden he got, he got pretty confident, didn't he? Because he then understood Not everybody could see that. Not everybody could understand that. And I wish sometimes that we could understand God's plan better, that we could see things better, that we could, we could, those scales could fall from our eyes and we could see that army, that spiritual army surrounding us and protecting us. But we don't get that. But sometimes God gives us a We know that God has a plan and a course for our lives. We know through Scripture that God speaks through Jesus. We know that He gives us, through His Word, inspiration and, and truth. We know that God speaks through the Holy Spirit according to John chapter 16. We know, or at least we should, that if we don't hear God, it's because we're not listening. Look at Proverbs chapter 1. In verse 33. Now he read 31 through 33. And when he started reading that, I went, is that the scripture I sent them? But I forgot that the point is just a minor point in these verses, but the point is there. In verse 33, he says, But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Whoever listens to me will be free. So I challenge you this week as you go through life, as you go through what you do, that you will focus or maybe refocus and take time in your life this week to listen a little bit better, to watch a little bit 